So you're looking to make an ARC server. Maybe you're tired of playing on public servers, maybe you want full control over your ARC, or maybe even you're just curious about how it all works. Whatever has brought you here, don't worry, I've got you covered. In this tutorial, I'm going to be guiding you through the process of setting up your very own ARC server. By the end, you'll have a server that's fully customized just the way you want it. So let's get started. Okay, so first things first, we're going to need to go ahead and download Arc Ascended Server Manager. There's currently two different sources for Arc Ascended Server Manager. You can get it on the GitHub or on itch.io. For this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to get it through GitHub. First things first, you're going to want to go to github.com forward slash csbrad forward slash ASAM. Or you can follow the link in the description. You're going to want to go ahead and go to the releases tab for the latest version of ASAM. If you scroll down just a little bit, you're going to see a file called release.zip. You can go ahead and download that. Once the file is downloaded, you can go to your downloads location, extract the zip file, Once the file is extracted, you can move the folder to wherever you would like it to be stored. For now, I'm just going to leave it in my download section. Once you've opened that up, there's two different ways of loading ASCM. You have your ASCM.exe, which is an executable, or your start.bat file. The differences between loading these is the start.bat file will open with a developer console, which just shows you all the log messages live. Or you can launch using asm.exe, which will launch without a developer console. For the purpose of this video, I'm just going to launch it using the normal executable. Because there is a huge fee required for signing your applications, this pop-up may show. Don't worry, it's nothing serious. It just means the application is unsigned and Windows can't verify who has published it. So after you've accepted that, ASAM will now download ThemeCMD. Once ThemeCMD has finished installing, you can type quits into the console and press enter. There we go. ASAM is now downloaded and almost set up and ready to go. So we've got a few different options here. So our first tab is our dashboard tab. This is where all of your servers and profiles will show up. We have a backup section. By leaving this section def default, uh, a new folder will be created in the root directory of ASCM called backups. You can also disable or change what days you want the backups to run. You can also set up a Discord bot, which is ideal for running commands through Discord for your ARC server, uh, starting stopping servers, getting chat logs, kicking and banning players, it does the whole shebang. Over here is the About section. You can see our end user license agreement, our website, and a donation button. This is also where you will update your client once the release has come out. So let's head back over to the dashboard. So first things first, we need to start creating our server. We're going to go ahead and click on add server. Choose the server name. And choose the game server type. If you have an existing server, you can import one. I will go over this later, so don't worry. There we go, our server is now added to the list. So to configure the server, you can open up this cog button. This will now configure all of the profiles and any files that are required for your server to run. Okay, now that we've clicked through all those, what we can go ahead and do is download ASA. This will open up a Steam CMD prompt, which will now download our server. While that's downloading, we can go ahead and configure a few options if you'd like. 
I'm going to start with a server name. So I'm just going to call this Brad's Ark Server. Now the passwords come like this by default, so make sure you change them. For now, I'm going to remove the server password. I'm now going to head over to the networking tab. So multi-home is for multi-homing. If you don't know what that means, you're most likely not going to need it. Your game port is the port you will forward to allow others to access your server. I'm going to leave this at 777 for now. Okay, so onto the Archon tab. Here you will see two different options. You can enable your Archon or disable it. That's completely up to you. For Archon to work outside of your network, you will need to port forward this port. However, don't worry, you don't need to if you don't want to access it outside of your network. Moving on to Maps and Mods. This is where you can add all of your mods and your map name. Now, I'm just going to leave this as the island underscore WP. So, as for mods, what we can go ahead and do is go to Curseforge. Curseforge is where all of the mods are hosted. Okay, so now that we've got that website open, we could just go ahead and look or search for a mod that we like. For the purpose of this video, I'm only going to be installing one mod, and it could be this one right here. So, to get the mod ID, all you're going to need to do is scroll down a little bit, get the cookies out of the way for starters. <laughs> We're going to scroll down a little bit and find the project ID. You can go ahead and copy that. Your project ID is going to be required for adding it into your mods list. We can go ahead and paste that there. So, if you wanted to add more than one mod, all you'll need to do is add a comma and then another mod ID. For the purpose of this video, I'm only installing one mod, so I will get that out of the way. Okay, so I won't go over all of the settings in this video because it will take quite a while to cover them all. Don't worry though. If you don't know what something does, you can simply hover over it and it will let you know. So, as an example, auto save period. Once hovered over, it tells you it sets the interval for automatic saves. Setting it to zero will cause constant saving, so make sure you don't set that to zero. Okay, so once the Arc server is finished downloading, it will then give you a notification that you're saying so. So, real quick, we'll just go over some of the tabs, what they do, and what is in them. Okay, so we'll just quickly go over a few of these tabs here. So, we've moved over to the Rules tab here. And, basically, what this stores is just certain game rules within the Arc server. Okay, so moving on, chat and notifications. In this tab, you'll find everything to do with chat and notifications within the game server. Okay, so, hidden visuals. In this area, you will find everything related to in-game settings. For example, showing hit markers when you hit a player with your fist, club, pickaxe, hatchet, whatever, whatever it might be. In the player section, you will find every single setting available to change with the player. Moving over to dyno settings, this also stores configuration for every single dyno setting. For the breeding section, this stores all the configuration for changing your dyno breeding settings. Moving over to the environment section, this will store and configure everything to do with the environment, such as harvesting speeds, day cycles, uh, egg intervals, weather settings, and even your XP multipliers. Moving on to structures, this will store the configuration for all settings related to game structures, such as turret settings, disabling placement collisions, structure resistance, so structure resistance, structure damage, etc. And for those of you that do not want to use a GUI based editor, I've also included a visual text editor. To open up the 
text editor, all you need to do is click open and it will load the files in. To use the search bar, you can type in what you would like to find. As an example, if I want to find something to do with a tribe, click search, it will find that first item. If I click it again, it will find another one and so on. The same goes for game user settings. You can click open, search for what you'd like to look for, and that is what we'll show. Remember, the making changes here, you'll need to click on apply for each one, rather than at the top here. Okay, now that we have configured our server, we can close down the configuration window and click on start. Upon starting your server for the first time, you will be prompted with a UAC prompt for Windows Firewall. You can give that access to allow for connections. Okay, so as you may notice here, I forgot to save the configuration file and the server name is now incorrect. So I'm going to quickly go back into my configuration server and just rename it. I will also remove the server password. Make sure to hit apply every time you would like to make a change. Now that I've done that, I can go ahead and start the server up. While the server is booting, I can go ahead and switch over to Arc. Okay, so now that you're in Arc, you can go ahead and click on Start, Join Game, Unofficial. The server's made by players. This checkbox is required. You can now search for your Arc server. And there it is. We can now go ahead and join the server. And there we have it. We've now successfully set up an Arc Ascended server. I'm now going to go back and show you how to import an existing server. Okay, before we finish up here, I'm quickly going to go back to the server manager and stop the Arc server. There we go, that's all done. So now I'm going to quickly show you how you can import an existing server. First of all, you're going to click on Add Server, create a new profile name, choose the game server type, and click on Importing. Once you're here, you can now go to the location of where your server was stored. Okay, so I have now found all of my old servers. To import this correctly, I'm just going to go inside one of them. Now, to import, you need to be able to see these three folders. Do not go into any of them, just make sure that your folder selected is where the server is stored. You can go ahead and click Select Folder. You will now get a notification informing you that the import process will begin and that it will take a while to move over depending on the size of the install. Once the server manager has finished importing your new profile, you will get a message that says the server folder has been successfully imported and the profile has been created. You can click on OK for that and click off of the add server. Once you open the configuration window, all of your settings will now be there. And you can go ahead and start your server. And this concludes the guide on how to make an Arc Ascended server. If you found this helpful, go ahead and press the like button. 
If you need help and assistance, go ahead and join the Discord. All relevant links related to this video will be in the description.